You're watching Connecticut's NBC station, WVIT 30. 30 News, an hour's news in half the time. With Joanne Nesty. Sports director Mike Crispino. And meteorologist Brad Field with his exclusive forecast. Now live, 30 News. Good evening. They were cheered and waved at all day, and tonight, Prince Andrew and his bride, Sarah Ferguson, now the Duke and Duchess of York, were cheered and waved at as they arrived in the Azores to begin their honeymoon. Their day started with horse-drawn carriages taking them to their wedding at historic Westminster Abbey and their vows before the Archbishop of Canterbury. This ring, I thee wed. I thee wed. With my body. With my body. I thee worship. I thee worship. And with all my worldly goods. And with all my worldly goods. I thee endow. I thee endow. Then a greeting for the Queen and on to Buckingham Palace where the crowds were shouting kiss, kiss, kiss. And the royal couple obliged. The bride will be known now as Princess Andrew, though few will resist the temptation to keep calling both of them Andy and Fergie. The newlyweds will spend their honeymoon sailing aboard the royal yacht Britannia. London wasn't the only place saluting the royal couple. In Hartford tonight, a group of women held a royal reception of their own. Anne Baldwin was among those who attended the special event. Oh, darling, darling, small champagne, punch, please. Everybody that is anybody was there tonight, saluting the Duke and Duchess of York. To dreams and hopes and promises in years of happy days. Cheers. It was an emotional evening for some of those who attended tonight's reception as they saw via videotape for the first time tonight Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson become man and wife. I, Andrew Albert Christian Edward, take thee, Sarah Margaret. Take thee, Sarah Margaret. The gowns were flowing at tonight's reception and it is rumored that there was some royal influence here as well. That was obvious by the lavish cake that stood tall honoring the royal couple and the hors d'oeuvres consisting of cauliflower, bell peppers, and Ritz crackers, which all added a special touch to tonight's festivities. Those in attendance, just happy to be here. I'm just impressed, and I'm so delighted. And just absolutely delighted that I was invited to this wonderful occasion. So even though the royal couple is on their honeymoon somewhere, they have not been forgotten, at least not in Hartford. Anne Baldwin, 30 News. A transplanted English woman was glued to her TV set in Madison this morning to watch the wedding. Jill Hill is originally from Yorkshire, and she said it's always a treat to see the royal family on a festive occasion, and she thought the bride and groom were terrific. She's a, a nice, wholesome-looking girl, and I think the dress is a good choice for her. The dress also turned a few heads at a bridal shop in Hartford. I didn't like the sleeves on Diana's. I like this one. It's very traditional, and I think it will sell a lot more. We probably will get uh, copies in a few months. A few months? How about a few hours? This group sat intently around their TV sets today in London, sketching furiously as Sarah went by. That done, dozens of seamstresses then went to work under the pressure of a pledge that their boss had made to have the first copy of Sarah's gown in a London store four hours after the wedding, and they did it complete with a look-alike Fergie model and all, and they expect to sell a lot of copy gowns. Two young girls abducted from their home in Hebron last summer were finally reunited with their mother in Florida today. The Holland family is flying home to Connecticut tonight, and Phyllis Parizic is standing by live at Bradley Airport awaiting their arrival. Phyllis? Joanne, a little bit of bad news. We've just found out that the plane has been delayed to about 11.30 tonight, but we will continue to wait for the Holland family. Nine-year-old Christina and six-year-old Carrie will be arriving here, hopefully shortly, with her grandmother and mom. And as I mentioned, we will be sticking around. Hopefully they will get here before the new show ends, and we will be able to go with them live. Joanne, back to you. Okay, Phyllis, we'll talk to you a bit later, we hope. In Bridgeport tonight, a piece of Connecticut history has been granted a reprieve. The state attorney general's office today came to the rescue of the Curtis Mansion. The 77-year-old landmark on Seaside Park was to be leveled to make way for condominiums. Concerned residents, though, took their case to the state, and today they won a temporary injunction against demolishing the mansion. This marks the first time the attorney general has gone to court to preserve a historic building in the state. A hearing on a permanent injunction will be held on August 25th. A New York City man was arraigned today in Newport, Rhode Island, 
On charges, he broke into a mansion in that seaside town, tied up and robbed eight people, including a Connecticut man, and raped a 47-year-old woman. 29-year-old Calvin Walker was arrested yesterday in Providence. Police say he broke into the Summer Wind mansion during a party early yesterday and stole more than a million dollars in cash and jewelry from the guests. One of the victims was 64-year-old Dexter Coffin, Jr. of the Connecticut family that invented the flow-through tea bag and other paper products and whose company is still based here in the state. After months of investigation and accusations, both the state and federal governments have signed an agreement pledging to make major changes at the Southbury Training School for the Mentally Retarded. The school had been cited in several federal reports as being understaffed. Today's consent decree mandates increased staff and less reliance on drugs and physical restraints to control Southbury's clients. Governor O'Neill called the order the bare minimum and vowed that the state would do even more at the school. A Meriden teenager who was given the boot from her summer job for wearing a hat plans to fight her firing. 14-year-old Bernice Miles says as an American Indian, wearing a hat or a headpiece is part of her heritage and the Meriden Community Action Agency violated her rights. Phyllis Parazic tonight has the story. From the first day Bernice Miles started doing office work at the Meriden Community Action Agency, she wore her hat. Last Thursday, she was told, get rid of the hat or don't come back. Somebody did not like the way the hat looked. They said it didn't look professional. And if I wore the hat, then they wouldn't get, I wouldn't get paid. And if I wore the hat the next day, then they'd have to suspend me. Bernice says she wears the hat as part of her American Indian heritage. Her mother, who's a board member at the Community Action Agency, says they won't take this lying down. We have an appointment with an attorney tomorrow morning. Um, it's something that needs to be addressed because it involves a minor on her first work site. Before Bernice started her job here at the Community Action Agency, she and other summer workers were given a set of guidelines which do include a dress code. But that dress code is very general and doesn't deal with specifics such as hats. Culture. The head of the agency admits there's nothing in the code against hats, but he says supervisors have the final say on what's appropriate clothing for a certain job. Bernice and her mom say it's really the principle of the thing. She wore the hat on all her interviews for the job. Then, two weeks after she started work, the hat, which was acceptable up till then, suddenly became inappropriate. Phyllis Parazic, 30 News. And coming up on 30 News, speeders beware. The Connecticut State Police have a new weapon in their arsenal. And a number of people had to be evacuated in Simsbury today following a gas leak. Guess who? John! has a brand new, mmm, even fresher scent. Jump, 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 jump. It's the freshest bounce yet with its freshest scent yet. So go ahead, jump. Come on in. Jump in. You are the one, the scent I love around me. Jump, 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 jump. If you haven't jumped into bounce clothes, start jumping. You've got the freshest bounce yet with its freshest scent yet. Jump. chosen Dan and over Breyers yogurt, watch Breyers turn your yogurt world upside down. Because at the bottom of every cup of luscious Breyers strawberry yogurt is more fruit. Thicker, richer fruit. It'll turn you right around to delicious Breyers. Now that thick, creamy Breyers yogurt has more real strawberries than Dan and, it tastes great. Mmm. So try Breyers, the full of fruit yogurt. Get to the bottom of it yourself. 
A 30-year-old Summers prison inmate is in good condition tonight at St. Francis Hospital in Hartford after being stabbed by a fellow prisoner. Alvin Moore was stabbed in the arm this evening in the prison's recreation yard. 25-year-old Richard Buxton is being held in an isolation unit tonight in connection with the stabbing, and he may face criminal charges pending an investigation. All is fair in love and war and in catching speeding truckers on Connecticut highways. The state police have added a new weapon to their arsenal called VASCAR, or Vehicle Average Speed Computer System. It measures the time and distance between two landmarks on a highway, and it's completely undetectable by a radar detector. Two state troopers say they've caught over four, uh, 500 speeding truckers in just five weeks of using VASCAR. State police also plan to add two way stations on I-84, like the one already in service on I-91 in Middletown. Emergency crews had to evacuate several people from the area around Drake Hill Mall in Simsbury this afternoon after a gas leak. Construction workers apparently hit a gas main while digging in the area of Route 10 and West Street. The area had to be closed. The leak, though, was brought under control within a half an hour, and there were no injuries reported. Five American businessmen were indicted today, charged in a scheme to sell a civilian version of the Lockheed C-130 transport plane to Libya in violation of a ban on arms sales there. The federal government charges the sale was brought about by routing the planes from Newfoundland to France, then to the West African nation of Benin, and then secretly to Libya. If convicted, the five men face up to 35 years in prison. It was a historic meeting, but apparently not a very productive one for Morocco's King Hassan and Israeli Prime Minister Shimon Peres. The men concluded two days of talks today in Morocco, a summit meeting not without risk for Hassan, but in a television address to his nation tonight, the Moroccan king said he couldn't get Perez to budge on some key points. And I said to Perez, what about the occupied land? About all of it. And he said, I won't negotiate. I said, good night. Perez left for home after Hassan's speech and we'll discuss the talks tomorrow. Hungry bluefish off the Greenwich shore have created a problem the waters in that part of Long Island Sound apparently couldn't handle as thousands of bunker fish died as they massed in an area near Grass Island during a bluefish feeding frenzy. The bunker fish suffocated because there wasn't enough oxygen to support them. The state DEP says bluefish usually develop feeding frenzies later on in the summer, but the recent hot weather may have caused the imbalance that sent them chasing after the bunker fish. Interesting natural phenomenon. Really, very interesting. And it will, remains to be seen whether the weather had anything to do with it. But we want to talk sports with the weatherman tonight because okay. we have a big, big game tonight. Yeah, Softball. we played uh, Channel 3 up Those at uh, St. Thomas Seminary in Bloomfield. And I'm not sure the exact score. I think oh, it was really? 13 to 11, but we but definitely we won. won. <laughs> There's no question about that. We won, and you're going to see some highlights of the game. Channel 30 beating Channel 3. Stars of the game for Channel 30, Rob Ewart, Pete Sumby, Dan Farley, Phil Shiner, and of course, Mike Crispino. You'll be hearing from him a little bit later. Uh, we'll take a commercial break after I tell you it was a great night for softball. Any other outdoor activities that you had planned this evening, I'll let you know how long the fine weather will last. That's coming up next. Extra from SK Levy Appliance Company during their Something Extra sale. You get a free automatic ice maker with one of these GE refrigerators. Get a $40 instant rebate on a KitchenAid dishwasher. A $50 savings bond with a Maytag washer or dryer. Get a Zenith console cutter TV with remote control at the price of a non-remote. There are many more extras during this sale, plus service by Levy's own technicians at SK Levy Appliance Company, West Hartford and Simsbury. The car will reshape your opinion, turn your thinking around. Because today, a strikingly sophisticated sedan with the performance and handling of a fine European road car doesn't have to come with a world-class price. Today, there's Mercury Sable. Over $5,500 less than Honda Acura and Audi 5000S. And right now, we have more Sables in stock than ever before. Turn to Mercury Sable, the shape you want to be in. Sable, available at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. 
morning. How would you like to have breakfast at McDonald's with a famous writer? No, not me. I've been gone for 60 years. It's the original Papermate Advancer Pencil. Just buy any one of these delicious breakfast sandwiches and get the Advancer Pencil free. A genuine Papermate Advancer Pencil. Free at McDonald's. Breakfast with a famous writer. Is this seat taken? Well, what do you know? Morning, Bill. <laughs> And so I'd say it's a strong, harsh taste that works. Medicine-y. Then we showed fire captain Joe Piranello how Scope with T25 kills just as many germs as his medicine-y mouthwash. Was he convinced? I'd probably have to try for a while and see. His scope worked very well for me. Even some of the guys at the station said something about it, which actually surprised me. And with all the bad cooking that we get in there, we have to have something that really works. Antiseptic scope leaves your breath minty fresh, not medicine-y. My wife kissed me one time and smiled and kissed me again. Sunny skies with comfortable humidity levels today, but those humidity levels will be going up. That's certainly going to be changing. Temperature reading made it up to 89 degrees today off a low temperature reading of 63. And, of course, there was no rainfall. Really fine day. Temperature reading right now under crystal clear sky, 72. Dew point is getting up into rather moderate levels at this hour. Barometric pressure on the rise and the winds are southwest at 5 miles per hour. Let's look around Connecticut and southern New England. 11 o'clock reports coming on. Clear skies with temperatures in the 60s and 70s. Pretty basically in the 70s around Connecticut with a light southwest wind of 5 to 10 miles per hour. And dew points getting up there into the moderate categories. 70 degrees, the report from New London tonight. It's 74 in Fairfield. 72 where we had the game in Bloomfield tonight. And uh, Sue Dillabaugh reports a 72 degree reading in New Britain. Here's a look at the satellite photograph showing lots of clouds in the intermountain regions out west. Lots of cloud cover down in the southeastern states, but New England, we're looking good. All this clear sky up here being sponsored by not only one or two, but three zones of high pressure that are just about stationary across the northeast. There's a storm system stationary across the southeast, and that's good news for them. They are getting showers and thunderstorms, which they certainly need, but the heat wave continues with temperatures today pretty much still up into the 90s and that warm air driving all the way up into the Great Lakes. So we're in for increasing humidity and the temperature going up a degree or two. And that's coming in for the next several days. Cooler air coming into the northwest. That is many, many days away from us. We've got the haze, heat, and humidity coming back. Here's the radar showing the uh, light to moderate cells through the intermountain zones. There are showers and thunderstorms across the southeastern United States. New England looking good. We'll go in close to prove it. And it's all clear up here. Northwest winds aloft will keep these showers to our south. Forecast looking good. Details for the overnight period call for clear weather. Warm temperature readings in the 60s with winds light and variable. During tomorrow, hazy sun with moderate humidity. Temperature up near 90. Sea breezes keeping it near 80 down near the shoreline. Sunshine index of 6. The DEP reports poor air quality. Fair warm weather tomorrow night. Temperatures in the 60s. And Friday, hazy sun, hot and humid. Temperature near 90. We're watching a minor rally by the other team, but uh, Mike uh, chipped in with a key triple. So we had we had a lot of fun. Nice night out there. That's good. It did look like fun. I'm and sorry. Brad made the game-saving catch. Wow. I think it was the top of the too seven. Modest, too modest to tell right. us about that. Too wrong, Mike Wood. Flip-flop, foot field, and left field. He made the great catch. That's great. That's great. And we uh, defeated the bad guys. Well, that's really nice. Uh, I guess the Red Sox don't want to do this the easy way, huh? They'd prefer to make no. it difficult. And a little interesting. A little I excitement, guess. you know? I guess. We're not going to rub it in, the fact that we won that game tonight. We're not going to mention <laughs> no, that again. No, not us. The fact that the score was 13 to 12 and 13 to 11 and Whatever. WVIT beat WFSB. We're not going to mention that again. <laughs> but we are going to get to the Red Sox and the Yankees next. Goes to left field deep. She sailed out of Canada. Bound for our shores. To satisfy a thirst no one has before. Out of Canada's maritimes comes schooner. If it's a smooth imported beer you've been looking for, aye, your ship has come in. For just pennies a pad, SOS is perfect when your pots and pans get a little messy or a little sticky. 
or even a little overcooked. Because whether you sear, score, singe, or sizzle, nothing cleans it up better than a super grease-cutting SOS soap pad. So it saves you work and money. SOS can't help your cooking, but it can sure help your cleaning. SOS, it cleans your big jobs for small change. Dave! Dave! You gotta taste my new Sunday. It kinda grows on you. Ah, uh, Earl. Huh? Taste the real Sunday and get a hot deal from Friendly. Oh boy! It's hot. Our Friendly Dollar Off Sunday sale. Get a dollar off any Friendly Sunday when you buy any sandwich or platter. All summer long, the Friendly Dollar Off Sunday sale. Mm. I think I'm in love. <laughs> Will you marry me? Friendly has a flavor call it. July 14th through August 30th, Stevens out to sell 500 trucks. Incredible deals on GMCs, Fords, Nissans, Toyotas, Suzukis, plus a group of Nissan trucks, $200 below factory invoice. GMC or Ford pickup, $59.99. Nissan or Toyota pickup, $57.95. Suzuki 4x4 hardtop, $67.95. Financing low is 3.8. 500 trucks for Stevens means one fantastic deal for you. Stevens World of Wheels, Route 6 Bristol. The news is all bad for Sox fans tonight. Oil Can Boyd, released from UMass Medical for a dinner with his wife, was arrested for an outstanding traffic ticket out on the Massachusetts Turnpike. Now, Boyd was a passenger in the car driven by his wife. They were stopped for speeding. Boyd was jailed briefly and released on $2,000 bond. And then out in Oakland, the Sox finished just an awful three-game set by losing to the Oakland A's 9-2 in a close one. This is Murphy with a shot up the gap. And the A's tied it up at one. Dwayne Murphy with the triple, and Carney Lansford, who wrapped four hits, including two two-run homers. That one off. Nipper made it three to one. Tony Phillips gets it by Buckner. The final was nine to two. Sox move down to Anaheim next. Boy, this is getting atrocious. Good news for the Yankees. Rasmussen, who was hurt yesterday, you saw the line drive he was hit by right here on this program, is okay, and he may pitch Sunday. That's his next start. And the Yanks pressing closer this afternoon. Beat the Rangers, swept them out of Yankee Stadium in a wild one. Don Mattingly with a home run, number 18 in the third. It was 2-0 Yanks. But this guy, Larry Parrish, I mean, how many times have I said it? Walk him. Don't pitch the ball to the guy. Every time you pitch it, he hits it off the wall out there. He tied it up at two. Huff retired 18 in a row. But then this, ground ball, 10th inning. Pitcher Mitch Williams, lazy. Come on, guys. Didn't cover the base. Yankees won it 3-2. to two. Pandemonium, bedlam. They trail the Red Sox by three games. Elsewhere in the American League, Toronto 6-2 over Seattle. Barfield, 25 homers. He leads the majors. Casey over Baltimore, 7-3. Balboni with number 20. Cleveland, Ken Schramm has won eight in a row. That's the Major League best this year. Jack Morris, 39 consecutive innings without giving up an earned run for the Tigers. Now those battling bad news bears, otherwise known as the Mets and Reds, added again in Cincinnati. The Mets now have won six straight at Riverfront. They finished them off tonight, three to two. I don't know, maybe they were thinking soccer or something out there after last night's battle. But Cincinnati jumped on top. Home run from Eddie Milner. It was 1-0 in the third off Ron Darling. The fireworks ensue. And then Dave Parker, the guy who blew last night's game, gets into this one. Back-to-back, -back, number 21, Cincinnati, 2 to nothing. But back come the Mets. Tim Tuffle, scheduled for that appearing in the Houston courtroom after the brawl down there when they were visiting the Astros. And it was 2-1. And then Kevin Mitchell, the guy who's Mr. All-Purpose, the utility genius, two-run homer, 3-2, Mets win it, Darling gets number 10. Out west, Houston leads the Giants by two games, and they keep the pressure on against the Expos. Ground ball, that was a knee knocker off Nepper, scored a run. Then Clark Kent, in relief, throws the curve. Ground ball left side, great play by Craig Reynolds off balance. That's a tough play. Brad Field made that play once, I'm telling you. And Davey Lopes, he's an Astro now. Left side, it goes up the gap. They win it, do the Astros, 4-3. to three. That was in 11 innings. National League, Chicago Cubs lost 7-5 to five to San Diego. Dodgers 6-5. Pirates released Lee Mazzilli tonight. Philadelphia beats Atlanta 4-2. to two. The uh, Giants beaten again by St. Louis, 4-3. to three. AFC champion Patriots, second of three double session days at Bryant College in Rhode Island. Number of key veterans in contract disputes. So what else is new? Eight guys are holding out right now. Steve Nelson, Pete Brock, Ken Sims, Steve Grogan, and Tony Eason are on hand. And Eason, without question, is a starting quarterback, uh, according Tony to the Eason's coach. Tony Eason's our starting quarterback. And uh, Steve Grogan, as we all know what he can do. And Tom Ramsey, we're going to play him more during preseason to give him a little playing time. And he's, uh, he's been looking real good so far here in camp. 
Yeah, we do know that Brogan that, uh, can come in in the Super Bowl in the first six That's minutes right. and at least, you know, keep the score down to 46 <laughs> to 10. Billy Sims retired today, and uh, Martina went back to Czechoslovakia, first time since 75, and, you know, the women are playing well over there. They're going to the quarterfinals now against Italy in the Federation Cup. Clark Kent is a pitcher. I didn't know that. Yeah, he got a little help today from Superman at short there, Craig Reynolds. <laughs> Coming up after a break, we'll take one last look at today's fairy tale wedding of Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson. Go shot for shot with a formidable opponent. Find out what you're made of. That's the communications game MCI plays every day. MCI competes by investing over a billion dollars a year to keep our network the industry's most modern. We know our competition's good. We have to be better. Because we compete, you win. MCI. Communications for the next hundred years. This year we'll play a mustache on your face so luscious and creamy it's high as we hate. This year we'll play With 100% Nutrisweet, sugar-free hires will look great on you. Here at Lynch Toyota Pontiac, we try every day to sell every Toyota and every Pontiac from $300 to $800 less than any other dealer on a comparable car. Now, we can't guarantee that we'll always sell for that much less. We can't control what other dealers charge, but we can tell you that that's our commitment, not only to serve the people in our own area with $300 to $800 less, but buyers from 70 to 80 miles away. For a new car, a used car, Come to Lynch Toyota Pontiac, where you can still get financing as low as 5.9%. Yes, it's true, unless this emblem is on your car. You probably pay too much. If you're ready to keep cool this summer, Pureways is ready for you. Here in our giant warehouses, we have thousands of air conditioners that will sell at prices so low that we say if you can buy it anywhere else for less, we'll refund the difference. Choose from Pureways' fabulous selection of famous name air conditioners. Kelvinator, Frigidaire, Westinghouse, Whirlpool, Gibson, Quiet Cool, Amena, and Hot Point. So come on over to Pureways and keep cool with the lowest prices. Pureways, Ludlow Mass, Windsor, Southington, and Seymour, Connecticut. Just to update you on our earlier story from Bradley Airport, we're still awaiting the arrival of the Holland family there. Phyllis Parazic is there, and we'll have details tomorrow morning on our morning news updates. And that's 30 News at 11. For Mike Crispino and Brad Field, I'm Joanne Nesty. We'll leave you tonight with a last look at the royal wedding, and we'll see you tomorrow night at 6. Good night. this ring I thee wed I thee wed with my body with my body I thee worship I thee worship and with all my worldly goods and with all my worldly goods I thee endow I thee endow Your mama said it'd be days like this. But every day? Good thing you've got Dixie Living Wear. You know it. Yes, I do. Living Wear goes from the microwave. Straight to the table. Don't try that with a phone plate. Dad, can you cut this? For Living Wear, you can, sweetheart. And the plastic coating means... It won't soak through. Mm-hmm. And you used to use <laughs> Living Wear just for picnics. This is your idea of a picnic? Uh, every day's easier, honey, with affordable Dixie Living Wear. You said it. You're watching Connecticut's NBC station, WVIT 30.